here at the Bangkok Motor Show. This is at a place called Impact Arena. This is apparently the 43rd iteration of this. So, parking was a hassle. It's a Monday afternoon. They built the convention center with almost no parking. That's the way this country works. No one thinks more than five minutes into the future. Okay, let's take a look around, see what we have. with Mitsubishi, although there's nothing here. Uh, it's all over there. All right. I think we'll walk the outside perimeter first. All these tables are here because people come to the motor show and they buy cars. You can actually buy the cars on the floor or they'll order, you know, obviously, and you go to a dealership and pick it up. But that's why you see tables at all these large uh, booths. Imported cars are like two to three times as much as they should be. Import taxes, which is fine. You don't need to have a luxury car. If you can afford it, pay the tax. Uh, the first year I've seen Jeep in this country. Let's see what a Jeep costs here. Rubicon four door, there's no price, meaning it's probably really expensive. So a DBX is 20 million baht divided by 30 and that will give you the US equivalent. So, right. Does that mean it's 77,000? I can't do the math. Seven hundred thousand dollars? I guess that's what it is, right? Around seven hundred grand for that thing. I don't know what those cost usually, so I don't know. Here's the Vantage. So this is fifteen million baht, or five hundred grand, a half a million. That sounds about better. Sir Mat 
legendary sports car. Yeah, it's been sold, obviously. MC20. I wasn't even aware of this car's existence. Let's take a little walk around. So the question is, will there be a die-cast car coming up this soon? It looks like an Aston Martin to me. This rear end looks like an Aston. charging station. So this thing looks pretty cool. A 4 series convertible. That grill looks a little better than the car is like $200,000. I don't know if uh, the IX costs in the, the US, but I'm sure it's not 200 grand. booth but I'm pretty sure you don't need to see videos of that so here's a brand you guys might, might not know in the States GWM I think these might be the world's largest electric car manufacturer but correct me if I'm wrong and let's take a look at some electric vehicles This 
standard looking SUV. I've seen these being driven around quite a bit now. You pretty much have a straight off, uh, pretty much a Chinese Bronco, right? This looks like a Ford Bronco to me. But it's called the Tank 300. I guess that's a fitting name. And then a car I see being driven around a lot already here is this GWM Good Cat. It's just a cute cute car, I guess. Kind of like a Mini, kind of like a Beetle. So, let's see. No, take a look at this good Aura Good Cat, it's called. Pretty small trunk. dash there, flat TV style. Okay, let's move on. Good old Lexus version of the Toyota Alphard, or Alphard. If I had a lot of money, I'd probably get one of these. These are like yachts. Look at the seats inside of this thing. They move back and forth, of course, and they're all aerated, probably massage chairs. There's actually a third row back there as well. This thing is 5.5 million. So divide that by 30 and get an idea what it costs. Pretty cool. So this is not a preeminent uh, destination on the show car circuit. So, oh, by the way, I have one of these, but I drive a white version of this. It's called the, the Sienta, the second Sienta. I'm sure many of you have seen this car before. I know Tomika has a model of it, this automated bus. It's quite large, but this is the first time I've seen it in person. It'd be cool if we could go up inside that thing. That is really, t really big. So big I can't even get it in frame. The automatic. My me, Conrad. Conrad. Concab. My me, Kiro Auto. Robot. Okay. Dene. Magaba. <laughs> yeah, people buying Toyotas, safe bet, got a little Gazoo Racing Yaris. Yeah, it's totally gutted out, gutted out, got a racing seat, a bride seat, electronic dashboard, Cool. So another popular brand here is MG. 
these are Chinese cars. You know, it's some Chinese company bought the brand. It's, they look pretty nice and all, but my, my problem is I've never seen an old Chinese car. It's pretty rare, so I don't know about the reliability of these things. Uh, 1.3 million, maybe that's like 40,000 bucks. So that doesn't seem too bad. But will it be there in 10 years? I don't know, in 10 years if that thing's gonna be running still. Sadly, Honda doesn't sell any exciting cars in this country. They don't sell the NSX or really much of anything. Just your standard Accord and Civics. And what is this little SUV? An HRV. Yeah, that HRV looks pretty nice. So you got this one here, the electric version. Looks a lot cooler. That version. I don't know if that's hybrid or not. Pretty cool paint job on this one. A million baht, like thirty thousand dollars. Seems pretty fine. I think these are actually manufactured in Thailand. That's why. pickup truck it's all lowered it's got some crazy looking wheels on this thing rotiform wheels I see yeah So we got Suzuki. Uh, this thing is interesting. I don't know what it is. An Alto maybe? But it's all retro. A Solario. Small little car. It's got some quilted leather seats. I'm liking these steel wheels though. I don't know if that's factory or not. Okay. Okay. 
This is cool. A little Suzuki carry with a camper on it. I've never seen this Suzuki carry in this country though. I've seen the older versions in the front end of this one. But it's looking pretty neat. It's got small wheels. All wood trimmed in here. Alright, we got some people modeling it for us. So you got that must fold out to become a bed. We got some storage. There's no sink or anything though. There's storage up above the front cab. There's storage up there. But uh, I don't think there's any way to wash your hands or anything. Oh, that's cool. I like how this window pops out. Very neat. And then inside. So the Suzuki Carry is a commercial vehicle mostly. So very Spartan interior, although this one's got an aftermarket you know, upholstery and uh, steering wheel there. Okay, we got what? A Suzu. Yeah, sadly Isuzu just couldn't cut it in the North America, but they're still going strong here. Got a little slammed out race truck. This is a crazy carbon hood. Really big weave. Nice. The Nissan, let's see. If... Nissan doesn't really sell any exciting vehicles here either. No GTRs or anything. Just the standard vehicles. Pushing the Almera. All right, we're not even gonna go there. Oh, for you guys. Here, here you go. This is always good for the show. I like Volvos these days. Volvos have cool styling now. Definitely a lot better than the 1980s, the boxy Volvos. Oh, the, the 850T is still a cool wagon. It's a cool color. It's like a cement green. This is cool looking. So the Hyundai Staria. I've seen a few of these on the road here. This thing looks like it's right out of the Tron. <laughs> it's so crazy futuristic looking. I don't know if I, I kind of like it. Wheels are pretty interesting. 2.5 million. So $800,000, is that right? No, I can't do the math. What am I wrong with me? $80,000. Yeah, my bad, 80,000 bucks. Ah, boy. Pretty spacious. Got a flat, some TV dashboards. TV dash, seat TV center. There's actually three seating, three row seating in the front. You can actually see the side bolster over there. Interesting. Didn't expect that. So three, three. This is a 12 seater or something. Three, three, two, three. Interesting. So I'm gonna guess you can maybe take the seats out. They're on tracks. Futuristic tail lights on this thing. Yeah, that's just it. So there's a gold treatment on the grill. Staria Premium. 
I get a wide shot of this thing. Never seen this before either. A Krita. The side windows are weird because the black of the side windows is not matching the black of the rest of the body. It's, I don't know if the camera is going to show it, but these two panels here are not the same black as the rest. So that seems weird for an $80,000 vehicle. Even if it was $40,000, which is probably what it costs in Korea. This is strange. Okay, let's move on. Peter's got an interesting front end. Yeah, you guys know what Porsches look like. There never there aren't gonna be any of the cool ones here, so no reason to Let's go there. What the heck is this? This booth says KN. I've never heard of this company. Oh, this is Kia. <laughs> I've never seen this logo. This is a new, new to me logo. Interesting. Kia Carnival. I like this side here. It's like a diamond this diamond plate here. It's actually uh, three-dimensional, this little accent. This is metal, I think. It's very cold. It's pretty neat. So you got a TV screen going on in there. It's a pretty low-slung band, though. Ladies and gentlemen, a great presentation. Got some nice accent lighting here. Carbon texture and the light. Flat screen. TV's behind the front seats. There's a third folding rear middle seat here. And then the rear seat is a three. They're all individual as well. They all need different angles. Pretty nice. Not very tall though. $60,000. I, I kind of doubt a Kia would cost 60 grand in the States, but I really don't know. I don't check auto prices. As you can see, movement has always been at the heart of all friends. It's alright. Nice and wide center console. It's kind of like a tall car. Less than the. Very low minivan. up the music, show off their models, like female models that is. So for you guys, I guess I'll take the bullet and show you some Porsche models.
718 is like a quarter of a million dollars. ขอต้อนรับทุกท่านเข้าสู่งานบางต่ออีกเตือนในชื่อด้องมอเตอร์เชลล์ครั้งที่ 46 I don't know who brings a husky to a car show, but that girl did. That is not an attractive forester. It's too busy. But this thing's cool. <laughs> this is ugly cool. I don't know what truck this is originally, but the whole back end is blended in. It's a Toyota Helix. So this is pretty crazy as far as the, the back cabin. Take a look in the Hino. Uh, there's people in the Hino. There's a TV, like an office space. Uh, nice, we got a little lounge back here, a U-shaped lounge. Some chrome shelves, TV. So there's probably a bathroom up in the middle here. This would be a nice little party bus. Cool. Hey, this guy's just selling the Alphards, Alphards. Some customizing booths here, so we have tech art. Tech art wheels. What's up? Some 143rd scale cars. Interesting. Too big for me, but pretty cool looking. That is a crazy color. With crazy matching wheels. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That looks nice. I kind of like these wheels. They remind me of like 1970s Italian rally wheels. Like, pretty nice. Hmm. All right, I do it too. Okay, it's about to need a club. Bravis. That's eh, kind of weird looking. Gangster G wagons. <laughs> it's 
still even a modified Tesla. Uh, it looks kind of weird. I like the mirrors though. Yeah, it's a totally blacked out Tesla. Ah, look at this. This is my favorite car of the show so far. <laughs> I used to have one of these, so. But this one's got modern headlights and all that. I think these are electric car conversions or something. I don't know what the deal is. This is a Citron, this is a Ford. Well, if you like majorettes, uh, there's an entire booth of them here. I'll do a quick pass through for you guys. Got like a drift car here. Got a video game simulator. What are these? These come in special boxes. It's like a pimped out drift car. Well, you can't see it in this packaging. It's weird. Just buy one, get one. Yeah. Okay, so it's like three dollars, so a dollar fifty for each one if you get to buy one, get one. Wall of majorettes, monster trucks. Viper color changer. Well, I'm very glad that. Uh, there's no Mini GT or Inno 64, because if there was, I would spend the next hour in that booth. Okay, carrying on. Got some jet skis. Well, what is this guy doing? This guy is customizing some cars. What is a drill press? Oh, he's custom. That's not a drill press. This is a rivet machine. So he's literally putting the cars together, riveting them together. So, interesting. Hobie so, canoes, paddle, pedal canoes. Kick this. Oh, look at this. Yeah. So if I move the foot pedals, then these things are doing this crazy action. Hopefully I can get under there. Hold on here. So that's a weird. But it must work. Interesting. Whoa. That's pretty cool. I've never seen one of those. Hmm. Little uh, electric camper. Is this a Benz? No, it's a copy of one. Some sort of Chinese 
showgirls for you. And then I don't know. It's just about future mobility. Train train parts, truck parts. Okay. Darn, there's always people in the campers. That one's got a different layout in this one, this Hino. Let's see if we can go through. Alright, got a little bed slash uh, table area. It's kind of dark in here. There's literally a separate wall for the driver's cabin. Cup holders, of course. And then you got like five chairs back here. And then there's a bathroom, a little kitchenette area, so here's the whole view. This is pretty cool. Hey, you could actually take a shower in here, there's a shower head. And you gotta go, you gotta go. I like it, very cool, you can actually, there's not much, uh, upper storage so you can it feels very spacious played Gran Turismo since like GT3 maybe even GT2 this is an aluminum bus an electric aluminum bus all right it makes sense lighter weight better fuel mileage so all about pushing electric vehicles. These must be all the electric cars you can get in this country at this time, or some of them. And we got a little Honda City race car. I don't know why the front wheels have so much camber. Some Sparco seats. Roll cage in there. Gutted rear. That looks pretty cool. Is this an old Jaguar? Let's see what this is. Volvo. Yeah, this is a Volvo, but it's now an electric Volvo. Pretty cool. You want to see a small K class car? This is a K class, I imagine, or it was a K class. It says Takano Cars. So, if you watch my videos on K-Class cars, that's why the models look so small. They literally are small vehicles, like large golf carts. All right, Yamaha literally has golf carts. electric scooter. There's some R1 styling on the front, those headlights down in there. I don't think this is for sale, is it? It looks like a production vehicle.
looks like a production vehicle, but there's no price, so maybe it's not for sale yet. Or... Nope, still no price. No, well, there you go. Yeah, it's a MotoGP bike. Enfield. I think that's an old British brand. So the retro look. So 650cc and 243. So that's like $8,000, I think. I think these things are at like $5,000, though. I think they're made in India. Bike looks like a weird Gundam or something. The front head. MT09. Got some dirt bikes. It's pretty cool. A 155cc cafe racer. Uh, it doesn't have a price on it though. That thing's pretty neat. Nope. All right. I'm looking for a mesh jacket. Out towards the cafe. This has a different meaning for me. Okay, yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, Suzuki. Look at this little mini racer here. It's probably like a 150. Just looking at the front tire. Yeah, it is a 150. And then if you want to die quickly, you want to get a Hayabusa. Kawasaki. reason to have a sport bike in this country because there's so much traffic you'll never go fast anywhere you're not allowed to take bikes on the expressways so there's no reason to have a fast bike in my opinion it's also the number one country for car accidents after two small Caribbean countries so yeah these are death machines ZX10R Anyway, it's the old H2 here. That's an expensive bike. It's also a death machine. I mean, this thing is... Doesn't show the horsepower rating, but something insane. Good old Honda. So, okay. We got a Thai GP racer.
this is an electric scooter over here. Yeah, this is a PCX electric. So it has two battery packs under the seat. Uh, there's not enough light in there, but yeah, there's two battery packs you can pull out. This looks to be a smaller electric scooter here, the Benley E. Drum brakes in the front though, that, that'll kill you. Yeah, those are the two batteries I saw on the other one. There's no price though. And I can't read that, I don't know what the range is. Oh. It can go 60 kilometers an hour, and I think the range is probably 70 kilometers. Look how big that outboard motor is. That thing's like half a motorcycle. Yeah, old classic CB1300. Pretty cool. Wow, that's another old classic looking bike, but it's modernized. It's the fairing version. On the gold wing, flat six cylinder. I think it has a reverse gear. Two wheeled barge. <clears throat> this is a funky looking, like off road looking scooter. ADV, 425,000 baht. So that's like $12,000, $12, $13,000. That, that makes no sense. 13000 bucks. <laughs> it's kind of an ugly bike. Some old classics. This used to be called the, uh, well, no, never mind. I built one called a CT70, very similar, but I think smaller than this. But the DAX 125, I think, dates back to the 1970s. So it's cool that they brought it back. And it's only 84,000, so less than three grand. Very retro. But they have disc brakes on the both, both ends, so it's actually quite modernized. I like this one, it's got off-road wheels, off-road tires, carbon fender, and then this looks like an off-road cub, it is a cub, alright, good old monkey bike, the Z50, or what is it now, this is a, around $3,000, 100,000 100, baht, this is a 125cc, which is all you really need for, for Thailand. Modified ones. I don't see any mesh jackets though. Nope. Yeah, that's cool, that military green one. If I had a farm, I would probably have one of these. ที่ท่านกําลังจะได้รับชมตอนนี้จากฟูเดคลาสหนึ่งหกศูนย์ณตอนนั้นเป็นโฟลด์เดได้รับคําแนะนําการพบกันของจากฟูสองลงการเจน
กิดขึ้นแล้ววันนี้สวัสดีครับคนไทยทุกคนผมเจชาตยุทธสุสิทธิ์ครับผมรู้สึกดีใจและเป็นเกียรติมากครับที่ได้รับโอกาสมาเป็นเซนเตอร์ออเดนคิกในวงสูงซึ่งเรียกได้ว่าเป็นกับฝูงของวงการรถสปอร์ตของตัวติดคอนเซ็ปต์นำหน้าอย่างจัดสุดดีอัลฟาออฟสกิลออเดนคิกในวงสูงใหม่ในปีนี้ครับจัดเต็มทั้งดีไซน์และเทคโนโลยีทั้งแรกที่ผมได้เห็นรถนะครับสวยมากๆ Gold Harleys. Check this out. You look good old a Barth 500. This is a rare car anywhere. Unfortunately, you can't walk any closer. There's literally a sign saying no entry, no headrest. Man, you get into an accident in this thing, you are done for. Kind of like the classic Mini. Oh, right. So. We got this Moon Eyes drag bike. Look at Bonneville Salt Flats bike here. Yep, sure. Just enough fuel to get down the track. Well, the salts. But look at this guy. Straight up, Bosuzoku. All right, what is this thing? I think this is a Skyline. Yeah, this thing is awesome. So, all those Aoshima Grachan cars you collect, that's what this is all about. Yeah, I think this is like a KDR 30 or... Look at this exhaust pipe. This lightning rod exhaust pipe coming out. Crazy wing. Really deep, small diameter wheels. It's got a crazy, like, uh, foil sticker striping. <laughs> it's got a chain chain shifter. I don't know if you can see it, but there's just a tall chain sticking up and that's the shifter. It's got the side strakes on the hood and the, the giant giant fry pan spatula front end with an oil cooler. This is maybe my, that could be my favorite car. Either this or the classic mini. And then this is third place. Wait a second. What is I think we have a K-class car. So here's a full-size Elf Elfhard, a Toyota Elfhard. And then we got this little green thing, which I'm trying to figure out what this is. 430,000, that's like 13,000 bucks. It says Paco. So, just look at the person standing next to this thing. So this is like, oh, it's like a golf cart. It's an electric golf cart. All right, let's see this guy get into this thing. It's a really modern looking golf cart though. specs on this guy. It's full electric, 6-8 hours. Okay. That's an unexpectedly colorful interior. It's actually a pretty futuristic interior. I like the open space. Alright, 
right? So you got a rear seat folded down, but then they got the uh, charging cable there. All right, same as the white one, just a pinkish color. <laughs> it's so small. Uh, I love these K-Class cars. Sanjay, man, neck back. I guess this is a Huracan. I don't know. Is this a Huracan? It looks like a Huracan. I don't know what that is, really. Modified. color on this Audi as well. Concrete. One of these Aura Good Cat electric cars. There's a charging port. Uh, this is about window film. Ooh, cool, another Land Cruiser here. Actually, it's the first Land Cruiser I've seen. I don't know which one this is. LC80, LC100, not sure. Oh, I see some diecast cars. Hold on a second. Got some RC drift cars down here. The diorama's cool. Uh oh. Tarmac works. Let's see if there's any I uh, really want. Luckily, no. I actually have this one already, but the wheels on it are not very good. Oh, you got this thing. I already have that one. Some hobby Japan? No, these are Inos. Uh, thankfully, I don't want any of these. Uh oh, ignition model. I like these Porsches, but I already have so many 911s. The first gen NSX. The problem with this ignition is, look at the front turn signal, it's just silver paint. It's such a big turn signal, it should be a plastic insert. I did review one of these. I reviewed this one. Those are nice. Uh, some 143rds over here. Some uh, tiny. Green lights. Okay. Some mini GTs. So far. Oh boy, that thing is really expensive. That's like $33. Cool. Big Bat Batmobile. Some t shirts. But over here, moon stuff. Not really into the moon stuff. Okay. This cool little diorama. I like this diorama because you can go around the whole thing. Nice. It's got some nice cars, models in here. Nice. All right, I spared my wallet here. That could have been a disaster, but uh, managed to just get through that alive. Some 
Sometimes I think about getting those massage chairs, but I feel that they would break. I had a friend that had one and they, the thing broke within six months. It's an old school Honda race bike. Oh, that's a good one too. It's a two-stroke NSR, single-sided rear swing arm. These guys are selling seats to put into your luxury vans. I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently it is. <laughs> this van kills me, man. It is so futuristic looking. That is it for the Bangkok Motor Show. There might be another haul, but if there is, I'll, I'll start the video up again. If not, that's it. The general summary is the uh, show cars here are fairly old compared to any shows in North America. The imported cars cost two to two to three to four times as much as they should. But if they're made in Thailand, their pricing is pretty much equal with anywhere else. But anyways, if you come to travel here and you want to see a bunch of pretty models, uh, this show is for you. Alright, see you guys. Take care. Thanks for watching. Alright, on the way out I saw a pretty special car for me. If you watch my channel, you know I like this car a lot. So there we go. The legend of the GTR begins here. It's got those Watanabe wheels on there, I think. So it's pretty low to the ground. It looks like a mid sized car from this era. You know, it's not a compact. Still, you know, a lot bigger than I thought it would be. I thought this actually would be a lot smaller in real life. The rear end looks a lot smaller than the front end. So we got a black leather interior. Would you let a window glare? Plus two seating. That's a, that's a rare car anywhere in the world. Okay.